What up, Pod Squatters? I'm Anita Wong. And I'm Tiffany Lee. We're investors, real estate agents, and the co hosts of Sarah Ladies, the girl power arm of subtle Asian real estate. Every episode will feature funny, casual conversations with dope AF participants, killing it in the real estate game. But also, mostly people like you and me, just trying to figure it out. Stay for the drama and lulls. We're not pulling any punches. But first, a quick Sarah Ladies announcement. Want to learn how to invest in real estate but don't know where to start? Then be sure to check out Sears' 30 Day to Buy a Home Challenge webinar series, where we teach you how to get from zero to one on your first or next property. Our six part series begin airing on December 6th on Facebook Live and YouTube. Let's ring in the new year with your new house. Happy buying! Now, on to the show. Hey, Pod Squatters. Welcome to the Sarah Ladies Podcast. This is your host, Anita Wong and Tiffany Lee. And today on the pod, we have a special two part episode on year end tax strategies because, you know, this is the time to make the biggest impact on your taxes. So today we have our friend, Tony Hong, the CPA dude on the pod. Say hi, Tony. Howdy, howdy. Uh, <laughs> thanks What's for having up? me. <laughs> so Tony was actually with us on an earlier episode, and might I say we were we are quite a ways now who we are than where we who we were back then. But Tony, to his own shock, was actually one of our most popular episodes during that time. So you know we had to have him back. And if you haven't checked out that episode though, it is linked in our show notes. So please do go check that out. All right, awesome. So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different with, with Tony, where um, Tony will mostly take over most of our podcasts with supervision, mostly from Anita, of course, because she <laughs> loves to <laughs> make sure we run a tight ship. <laughs> we were just joking about that earlier. Uh, this episode is going to be broken up into a two part series. The first of which is a general year end tax strategy uh, you need to know. And the second will be advanced tax strategies. Each episode at the end will be anchored with questions that we've gathered from our community on Facebook and Instagram. So for the future, any questions you have for our guests, feel free to drop them in there and maybe you'll make it into a future episode. Uh, with that said, if you don't know Tony, a bit about background about him. So Tony grew up in his parents' mom and pop restaurant. From a young age, he developed a peculiar interest in counting and organizing the cash earned at the restaurant each day. Before he started the CPA dude, Tony accumulated years of experience working for the big four accounting firms and advising top tier companies. He earned his accounting and management information system degree at the University of Minnesota Business School and shortly after put his accounting skills to test and obtained his license at a serve as a CPA. When Tony isn't elbow deep in tax returns, you can find him in the Bay Area lifting weights, bullet journaling, and keeping up with the latest tech gadgets. Hey, Tony. Oh, so fun. Yeah, there we go. Wow, yeah. that's uh, all right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Got something behind my name, I guess. Yeah, besides just being a dude. Yeah. The dude part is the lifting weights, but the soft side is the bullet journaling. <laughs> yeah. I'm a, I stay grounded with, with myself. Yeah. The masculine mm -hmm. and the feminine. Anyway, yeah. mm -hmm. let's jump into the first bullet, year-end tax strategies, um, cleaning up your bookkeeping. That is kind of a cool segue from bullet journaling, right? So what are your thoughts on that? Let's take it away, Tony. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, just like journaling every day, uh, just you don't need to do your bookkeeping every day, but it does help, uh, especially for... A lot of real estate folks um, usually it's a, a scurry year end, not even year end. Actually, it's always like March, April where you're like, oh, let me find all the receipts for my rental property. And they're like, did you get this, this and that? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. They're supposed to like provide a summary list of everything. So I think right now is a really good time for everyone to not scramble come next tax season, uh, make your life a little bit easier and get your books in order. Um, so simply going and doing all that now because you probably neglected it for 12 months uh most people just i don't know they just don't do it they're like oh rent checks in and then some expenses are here and there but no one actually keeps track of it 
So I think, you know, just getting all your books done, updated now, just so your life's going to be super easy. Uh, you know, everyone always knows revenue, but all the expenses, you know, not knowing what to write off or actually doing it. Um, all the first time investors too, just kind of getting that put in order. Um, so, hey, knowing what you can write off, like your management fees, your repairs, your, what else you got? Interest, insurance. Um, what else is there? And just insurance. Uh, what those oh like placement fees so if you don't know just start asking all your friends like what they write off it's usually a general good source especially a sarah crowd sarah crowd's like wicked good with taxes i'm like it's different compared speaking to other folks so if you don't know just ask someone that's i will community. i will say off. and i will out nelson for this but he um uh, nelson uses his va to do all his bookkeeping <laughs> so ah. he uh is, I mean, he tosses all his expenses to his virtual assistant who lives in the Philippines to do all his bookkeeping. And I have started doing that this year. It's life changing, guys. It is, it is freaking life changing. My CPA is like, are you already done? <laughs> I'm like shocked ah. this year. <laughs> so exactly. as an added bonus, if you're extra complicated, go find a VA and just do it for you. Yeah. Hey, um, quick plug, Anita, who told you to get a VA? <laughs> and then Tiffany told me to go to VA. <laughs> it's true. Best oh, business nice. investment I think I've made last year for sure. Yeah. Delegation. So, um, Tony, is that something you help advise with on um, for your clients, like cleaning up the bookkeeping? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Like we we do bookkeeping. We help them, teach them whatever they want to do. It's just like a very basic but just tedious task that no one wants to do so like what anita said you're probably best just finding a good va that can do it um make sure you find one that can do it right though <laughs> so like categorizing is one good thing but like actually balancing against your bank statements and your credit cards is like true bookkeeping so that og phrase of like do your books balance or you know balance your checkbook it's like actually true so uh, make sure you find like a good person on that side hey just a, an idea right do you have a bookkeeping a cpa dude bookkeeping template that you would prefer your clients fill out oh we actually do yeah <laughs> just because like they always ask me i'm just like yo here you go i actually just sent it to uh oh you guys know arthur you Yep. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. prevalent on the group. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I sent over his uh, my, my template to him yesterday. Him and I was shooting a breeze yesterday, catching up. But yeah. Well, he, he will you it. um attach it in the show notes for us? And so our listeners can oh. check it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Like, uh, and make to sure to include, out. yeah, make sure to include your contact information up top. So once they're done filing their doing their bookkeeping, they know where to send it to. Ah, oh, there you go. <laughs> like it's that. a marketing tactic. I'm a ah. I'm a marketing <laughs> genius, you guys. I love it. I need you on the team then. Yeah, I just uh my marketing is literally none. Just hey, here I'm here to help. What do you need? <laughs> is generally our marketing <laughs> skills. Nice. So yeah, yeah bookkeeping we're big is on very system. important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bookkeeping is really systemizing, right? Everything that you do. So yeah, me and Anita, we get into arguments about systemizing all the time very recently <laughs> oh. was like look at me like why are you throwing us why are you airing our dirty laundry <laughs> but right <laughs> it goes into tax prep Ta there's systems and everything right so bookkeeping you have a system for that you're not going to freak out over it next year right so mm -hmm. this is good it's a good um underlying strategy to have uh do we feel good about the bookkeeping part are we ready to move on to the next strategy there's oh, like yeah. six steps I it's a six-step program guys so oh, we're going to move into closing statements. So Tony, what are take us take us through closing statements? Yeah, so closing statements, once again, I think, you know, after, you know, you or Anita sell a home, you send them all these docs, that piece of like paper no one cares for, but the closing statement I actually care for uh, as like a CPA or, or if you do your taxes on TurboTax, you need to extract out um, your prepaid interest and your prepaid property taxes. Um, that's just if it's like your primary home, but also if it's like your investment unit, um, all the closing costs that you paid actually add into your basis. So uh, don't throw that away. <laughs> uh, that one's like the one piece of paper, at least I care for, 
Uh, I don't know what else you advise your clients to keep from that stack of papers, but that's the biggest one for your tax um, person or when you go file this on uh, TurboTax. Awesome. Okay, so closing statements. Next next piece, uh, three, estimated taxes. Get your projection in now. What does that mean, Tony? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is like, um, for, uh, it's applicable to everyone. Uh, so it's not just if you're, you know, have investment unit, if you have a day job, you're looking to get into real estate, like this applies to everyone. Uh, but simply put, it is pretty much doing your tax like a pro forma, um, like how much like actual total income you have. So from your W-2 to your rentals, to your flips, to your crypto, to your stocks, to um, what else, whatever else people, folks do, side hustles on. Um, so calculating all your uh, taxable income sources, and then actually running a projection to see how much tax you owe. Um, so the reason why I tell folks to do this right now is that to avoid underpayment penalties. Um, so like, you know, using you two as an example, right? As, you know, agents, you know, you're 1099, this got paying taxes every quarter. Um, if you didn't, you know, you still got one more quarter <laughs> on January 15th. Um, so shove it in there or else you get the underpayment penalty. Uh, and that's, you can round, there's not a, the comp, like the calculation super complex, but like you can generally round up to 10% of the underpaid balance. So if you owe 20 grand and you threw in zero in the whole year, you know, you're kind of two grand penalty. Um, so these are kind of like um, silly fees I tell folks uh, that they're paying. So it's kind of like, you know, when you have, when you overdraw on your bank, like everyone knows not to overdraw on the bank, but does it happen sometimes? Yes, but same thing for underpayment penalties. So that way you get this payment in by January 15th and then um, come tax time, because you know, for folks that are investors, um, especially uh, if you're in a partnership and you're gonna get a K-1, those like nine times out of 10, it's gonna be extended. Uh, like just cause partnerships always extend, uh, just cause like those tax, those bigger tax firms that handle those, um, they'll just extend cause they got no time, just try and get it in and then they'll finish it generally, unfortunately in uh, September. So, um, and the reason why is that you need to pay in all your taxes by 415, um, so you only get time to extend your taxes for the information. You don't get an extension to pay your taxes. I think that's like a mis, um, like misconception. Oh, so, wow. I yeah. didn't know that. Oh, man, I'm in trouble. I'm going to go to jail. To <laughs> <laughs> that I right, thought all my extensions was today. It was just for information. Oh, yeah. man, we're recording on the podcast. I should not have said that. <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you got money, so just pay away your penalties oh, and man. pay your jail bond. Yeah. All right. All right. So preparing for the extension, um, estimated taxes. So these are all things that you cover, right? Is that also part of the template that you have with the bookkeeping? Is this also like a separate tab? Because if it's not, it should be. Oh, so I've tried to <laughs> I've tried to make this one. The calculation is so complex. I'm just like, I haven't been able to make a good template. So I made a few versions of it. So there's actually a couple of ways to estimate your taxes. Um, there's a safe harbor method. Um, so you can pay in either 100 or 110% of last year's tax liability, depending on how rich you are. And at least you'll avoid the underpayment penalty, but you won't um, uh, have enough paid in possibly by uh, April 15th. Uh, so there's that safe harbor method. And then there's the second method. It's like the actual. So that's kind of like what we recommend is like, hey, how much income did you actually make this year, just in case you way, made way more, way less than last year, and then rerunning the calc. Um, I've been trying to I haven't had time, but I thought about like, you could hack this in like a TurboTax where you fire up TurboTax, and then you can try to run the numbers as if it was your 2022 tax return and see what pops out. I don't know if it does that though. Um, it's just one of those like back burner projects I want to try, but time's not my best friend. So <laughs> I we never got get, there. We should get a software engineer within the SEER network because there's so many software engineers in there and then just create our own like real estate tax prep software. And it's oh. like CPA dude licensed. Oh, oh man, look at all these business ideas Tiffany's coming up with. Yeah, who's a software <laughs> engineer? Hit us up. Yeah. Slide into the SAIR DM. Yeah. Yo, for real, for real. Okay. This yeah. is actually really cool because like 
I'm usually so delinquent with my taxes and Tony, you're making it so interesting. <laughs> you're speaking my language, man. <laughs> usually every CPA I know is some boring old guy, but like, you know, Tony, Tony's like a peer. So this is super fun. All right. So we covered three and four there. So estimate taxes, getting in your projection, preparing for the extension, which is just for education, not for payment guys. Remember that and stay out of jail. So number five, and this is very important for the real estate folks, 1031 documents and an installment sale. And I think working backwards on this, I'd like to hear from you, Tony, what is your suggested time frame for doing all these things? Like if we were to start with a clean slate in 20, like say you just drop the ball in 2022, you're like 2023, my new year's resolution is to get more on top of doing this in a timely fashion. Once we're done, tell us what time you would recommend doing one through six. But right now we're at 1031. So let's cool. talk about that. All right. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, good call out on the timeline. Um, but yeah, so 1031 uh, documents, also doing your installment sales, um, if anyone has those going on. But just the documentation for your CPA or TurboTax, whatever it is, just having it in place. So the 1031 documentation, generally, it's pretty easy just because um, just the, comp the title company, 1031 company is going to give you like those docs, but extracting out the part of what was your original cost basis on the home? Uh, <laughs> that was that, that that's the hardest part. So seeing how much did you buy this old property for? And then the one that gets everyone, their mom is like, how much did you make in improvements? So no one ever tracked their basis, um, on their properties. They just were like, cool, bought it. Cool. Cash comes in. I don't blame them. I mean, just that's whole purpose right there investments but knowing how much we need to calculate um from the gain uh is, or how much we need to defer is the hardest part so 1031 mm -hmm. obviously you know how much you sold it for how much new properties were but the hardest part is what was the original price of the property so that one cleaning that up go finding all those old receipts um probably a common question that we do get on that's like um oh actually at the um uh, at the sarah friends giving was uh one dude <laughs> he uh homie worked on his house for like 20 years and he's what? just like i just flipped i'm about to sell the home i think his cost basis was like 150 and he sold for like high middle like high ones and i was like oh god i just told him like i'm like whatever you got for documentation that's the perfect world add up all those receipts but if you have a ballpark guesstimate and you're a big gambler <laughs> I mean, be my guest and put down what you think your cost basis is. Uh, I'm just not signing your return. <laughs> you can sign your own return. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait, so question, and this might be a dumb question, but when you prepare everyone's taxes, right, for your clients, do you run it through TurboTax after you're done or you file directly to the Fed? Oh, the so the IRS, have... sorry. Yeah, so we have our enterprise uh, software that we use, um, is, which is actually um, a derivative product of Intuit. So they would just use their corporate version of it. Um, but yeah, I was like, man, TurboTax is, I don't know how to use it. So like one embarrassing story was like someone from the group reached out and they're like, yo, I got the whole return done, but the taxes seem too high. I like did it all in TurboTax. And I was like, uh, sure, I'll, I'll just take a look. You know, I'm probably just can guide you like what it looks like. Fire up the Zoom. <laughs> Just showed up like an idiot because I'm like, oh, I have no idea how to use it because I, I never got trained how to use TurboTax. I don't I only got trained how to use my own tool because like, I know what it needs to look like on the output, but like I don't know how to like push the buttons in TurboTax to make it look. So I was like, sat there for like 45 minutes and finally figured it out. But I'm like, that was a dumb idea. I thought it was gonna be like five minutes. I know exactly where to put in the button, uh, but it was a um, partial sale exclusion. So they uh, moved for work. It was their primary home and uh they couldn't take the full 121 exclusion so we just did a partial part but just didn't know how to trigger it in TurboTax. so as an accountant would you say TurboTax is like a legal zoom for attorneys like do you look at it and you're just like what is this like it's not nuanced to like you know a, from a specialist point of view like you know what needs to happen and TurboTax is kind of like too umbrella-y what's your take on that um so the free versions they're not bad if your situation's basic um but then once you start paying for the upgraded versions it's like almost like bro you should have just hired someone we had someone come in and um i think they paid they're like a sole proprietor they paid like 450 still in like TurboTax fees i'm like 
quite a bit for software to DIY yourself. Um, but yeah, kind of like, is, I mean, like, overall. Your, what is your like rule of thumb? Be like, if you start doing this, you should, you should start getting out of TurboTax. <laughs> like, oh yeah. You generally graduate out of TurboTax. So I say once you have um, K1s with multi-state, that's generally when people start coming to us. Um, when you have multiple rentals, like three plus, um, that's another time to start getting out of it. Um, if you're self-employed or have a side hustle, oh, for sure, get out of it. Um, just because there are questions, because they have the series of questions that help you do your tax return, but um, they're not, they don't know what you can or cannot write off. So there's like, they're just missing a lot. So you're gonna be losing money um paying for that software um and then um stock-based comp folks so like those folks that have stock options um i'd say and then rsus those are like that's when you kind of graduate kind of like that more money more problems so <laughs> like, yeah get anyone out of it. in sare should just stop using like turbo tax because that's a pretty i was like um i've been using i used used to use turbo tax pretty long way into that i think i had multiple rentals for a very long period of time in TurboTax, and i'm not sure how i whittled that into place without <laughs> without getting audited <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> you're still here but that's so funny because it goes back into that that asian diy thing right like you always oh, feel yeah. like you can do everything yourself and then it's like you have this ego about hiring a specialist but this kind of this is actually a good conversation to have right as abcs it's like we have this immigrant mentality that we have to do everything ourselves just to bring this back into the aapi fold right anita like <laughs> so it's not just straight my up education but, that. i will yeah, say yeah. my dad forced me to use turbo tax <laughs> you can do it yourself and you're like this is getting way too nuanced and it's like <laughs> okay now we have to hire a trusted specialist and that's where we position our friend tony um yeah exactly like he, this was all he did was count money he's like diy sensei of taxes um that's awesome all right so moving for speaking of dads and <laughs> and 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 retiring i guess that's number six self-retirement accounts hsa and ira all our dads if we're like in our 30 if we're millennial asians right now our dads are, are thinking about retirement and they nailed i feel like my dad's been nailing retirement into my brain and putting money aside for that since i've started working right so take us through self-retirement accounts and hsas and iras tony oh yeah yeah for sure so um just kind of like a band-aid solution <laughs> is um just to start contributing toward these accounts um, you know, you just actually have till 415 of next year to contribute towards these accounts, um, but you just don't want to miss the ball on it. Um, the reason said is that you only get X amount of dollars per year. Um, so is it 6,500? I, I think the inflation got adjusted. Six grand or 6,500 for your IRAs. Um, so you only get that per year. So say if next year you're like, oh, I made money and I got like 12,000 contribute. You can't throw 12,000 in. It's 6,000, 6,500 a year. Should probably go learn and inflation adjusted rates but whatever uh, <laughs> um but yeah just getting that part in and then also your hsa is big so for folks who don't know what that is it's your health savings account so when you have a high deductible insurance plan you're able to have this hsa account and it's probably the like unicorn of tax accounts actually because you get a deduction for putting it in and then it grows tax free you can invest it a lot of people miss that part so like you put the money in you actually need to like go put in into like some mutual fund or etf actually and no, i take that back i'm not a financial advisor you put in whatever you want um so <laughs> i take that back you put in whatever your heart desires yeah uh-huh yeah, uh, like, yeah mm -hmm. until i'm licensed in that field i'll, I'll, I'll try <laughs> are you um, working and, on that tony is that something that you're doing or you're just joking um i started but i have it's it's hard so i'm like or it's not hard it's just a lot of time which is my worst friend uh so i'm like Ugh. we're but, always big on self-improvement i feel like you yeah. getting into finance that's like weightlifting right it's just adding more weight Let's bring this full circle this there we go Get yeah stronger um, just yeah. need to bite the bullet and do it yeah mm -hmm. so yeah so that's um the hsa and then um was it your ira and then there's uh for the folks that are um self-employed um uh, kind of for yourselves here um just the self um retirement council your self uh, sep ira your solo 401k self-directed iras 
um, just contributing towards those because that's a good band-aid solution for a lot of folks. Um, so your SEP IRA, uh, 61 or uh, it was 61 last year. I don't know what it is this year for inflation adjusted, but yeah, you can slap in $61,000 into this bad boy uh, and shield it and defer it from tax. So tax strategies generally, the overarching principles are always deferral, acceleration, charity. Like those are your big things that how do you like game it? Um, so yeah, if you deferred all your money into a SEP IRA, um, that's just a way to shield it. However, you'd have to pay yourself a very high W2, um, which kind of not defeats the complete purpose, but a lot of so social security and Medicare taxes. Um, so yeah, just getting those items in there last minute will just be good for everyone. Um, just since we're in December now, there's not a ton, ton that you can do, which actually was good for when your time frame should be for the whole year. Um, so this is to wrap it up full circle. Like if it was a perfect year, say you know, your new year's resolution, you're drunk, you're like, I gotta get my taxes in order. Like this is like the order of operations that you should do it in. So January, you should actually sit down with either yourself, tax advisor, like I don't care who the hell it is, just sit down and get a tax plan in place. So a tax plan is equivalent to like a blueprint of your house or like your workout plan. Otherwise you're like building a house just aimlessly with your head chopped off. So get a plan of like, what are your income sources projected for the year? And how can you mitigate each one of those sources? So say if you have this house and you're like, oh, I'm gonna 1031 it. Cool, write it down. That's part of the plan. It's as simple as that. You just have to write it down because then you're gonna be like, all right, am I gonna have boot or not? If you have boot, all right, now you have to think of ways to reduce your boot. So it just write down everything you got. So that's like January, February, get all your docs ready to file your taxes. Just get it done out of the way. Like don't like, if you have the ability to not extend, um, just do it. <laughs> like all your docs are gonna come end of January anyways. So probably by the time it snail mails to you, first week of February. So you should be done by February. So get your taxes filed in February. This is it for personal taxes, right? And then if you have, you know, your business tax returns, so your S corps, your LLCs, that's due March. So, you know, plan on that or get your extension ready. And then April, you know, if you were lazy from February, you didn't do it and then file your taxes in April or at least pay in all your amounts <laughs> for your extension, file your extension, but pay all your taxes then. Um, and then also in April is actually Q1 of estimated taxes. So pay in 2023's first quarter estimated taxes again, um, and then revisit your tax plan at that time also. So, hey, a whole quarter's passed. What can you do, like anything adjusted? Like, did you move states? Did you buy a new home? Did you have a kid? Uh, like life-changing events, buy a car, like those things like actually affect your taxes. Um, so revisit with your tax pro again, or sit down on your tax plan and update it. So that's the first four months. Um, and then month five, I think you can finally breathe. <laughs> uh, month five, you can finally breathe. Oh, actually, no, I, I, I joke. You probably neglected your bookkeeping this whole time. So go update your books. <laughs> or, or, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I, he's a realist. I love that. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. Still, I like how you bake in the time to go back and be like, whoops, I didn't do any of that. Bacon yeah, yeah. for human error, like which is yeah. Yeah. bound to happen. Human error and procrastination. Yeah, procrastination is big. So, yeah, so <laughs> go clean up your books. Um, so that's month five. And then June is actually one of our bigger, busier months because um, that's actually when we do a lot of our client check in meetings just to be like, hey, what's happened since we last spoke? Uh, it's halfway through the year. Do we need the course correct? Um, so probably just, it's just more kind of like a, I, I call it like a tax tune up. It's like a tune up for your car. Just tune up your taxes for the year so you don't veer off too, too, too straight. Um, and then I think from there, now I think we're breathing. Like July, no, I joke. June, you should have paid estimated taxes again. <laughs> yeah, so the estimated tax, <laughs> yeah, estimated taxes. Yeah, because like people think like, like my years chill after 4.15, I'm like, dude, it's worse right now than it was back in tax season. <laughs> like, um, it just doesn't stop. So I forgot estimated tax due dates are 115, 415, 615, 915. They're not real quarters. I don't ask me why it's just the IRS. So one, four, six, nine, those are your, uh, months, uh, that you need to be aware for your estimated taxes. So that being said,
July and August. I think we're finally have some calm time to breathe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's good. And then, yeah, whole cycle starts again. Uh, Cause then you need to do towards Q4 again, you really want to execute on that tax plan that you made in January. So say if you made the tax plan, you're going to do these three strategies. You did nothing <laughs> for six or nine months, then please do something or, or just pay your taxes to the tax person. I mean, I don't care, but I think most people hate paying the tax man. So that's kind of like a recap from a full year, full cycle. Um, taxes aren't a once a year type of thing. Um, unless you're W2, probably actually, to be honest. But to say our community, that's not a, no. It's it's a whole year process that you should be continually working on just to monitor um, everything that's going on, especially since a lot of deals are coming in. Um, and then checking in with how your investments do too. So a lot of folks that we're working with are in the short-term rental space. Um, so highly profitable, uh, even after depreciation, they're in positive uh, income positions. So thinking about ways to reduce those taxes also. Um, and then also planning um, is big throughout the year too. So planning, um, what I want to say, like if you're getting into units or setting up a business, setting up short-term rental loophole, like those just take dedicated steps. Um, so from tracking hours, uh, that's, you know, get like reps tracker or something like that, clock apply something just to track all your hours throughout the whole year. So it's all maintenance, uh, as it comes down to it. It's why taxes suck for most people. Good for me, I guess. Yeah. So I feel like it, you know, it needs to come out of this is like a Tony tax workout plan. <laughs> you, know, like, you know, like I love that. Every, oh my God. You're month? like a personal trainer for taxes. Oh my gosh. And it has to be like formatted to be like, this is your goals and your, your gains. <laughs> your gains nice. Nice. Uh, and then and your tax cuts. It's cutting and gains, like dirty gains cuts. and cutting. <gasps> Oh man, wait! Oh my God! All right, this is another talk. Is later. Pin it, yeah. Pin it. That's well, awesome. We'll have to yeah. every single month. These are your goals, and we'll have to do like a, a workout plan. These are your things that you need to accomplish. And we'll yeah, that's a really good analogy. Through. Yeah, just have to yeah. maintain and keep on doing it. Uh, that, and then I always joke too, like sometimes a babysitter, sometimes a therapist. I'm like, man, I'm like, it's cool. Just keeps going. I'm like, all right. Yep, a lot of taxes understood. <laughs> well, yeah, you're here. getting me pumped, no pun intended, to do taxes. Like, there you go. Yeah. Train, I want to lift. I want to clean up my books. <laughs> Just talking it like this. This is cool. Yeah, let's get let's get healthy. Um, oh, I mean, if it. someone's gonna make a graphic for you to like a digestible graphic for you, it's gonna be Tiffany and. Yeah. It's a muscle and it's like, um, yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to this. We got this on recording now. So I'm just like, hey, remember that one time I was supposed to get this infographic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we're going to um, end the episode with a few questions from our community. And uh, we have sources from our Facebook group. And so these are real questions, real time. So this first question is about COSEG. Um, and, you know, it's a big year for COSEG. Um, so if we do a cost seg on a rental property this year, does the depreciation offset other incomes in the same year, or does it only offset rental incomes from the same property in the current and future years? Yeah, so very good question there. Um, so on a cost segregation, uh, Anita hit it spot on. It's very important this year because um, for folks that are trying to do bonus depreciation, you get the full 100% this year, and it phases down 20% every year after. So next year's 80, year following that 60, 40, 20, 0. Um, and it does offset only passive income. So you have rental property one, ran a cost seg on it, you're accelerating your depreciation, which is good, accumulate a loss, and then you have property two. Then if that say it's uh, really profitable, those two would actually net. So you can bring the losses over from property one over the property two. And then that way you reduce your overall portfolio. So, um, and the reason why is because um, rental properties are defaulted as passive income. So passive losses can only offset passive income. So that way, um, and then also any K-1 investments. Um, so anything that's passive in nature, um, per the IRS, not like if you think like your dividend portfolio is passive, which it technically is, but from my IRS side, it isn't. So anything from a K-1 perspective and also rental property perspective, the cost seg would you know, offset that. However, if you ran a cost seg and you have a W-2 uh, that's over 150 grand um, AGI, then it would 
do no good for you. <laughs> so because um, you can't offset passive um, active income with passive losses. So that's kind of like the caveats of the cost seg, unless you're doing a short term rental loophole. So taxes is like there's general rule, the exception to the exception to the exception. So to close it out is that if you're doing a short term rental loophole, um, which we'll just cover over, I think in the next episode here for the more advanced part is that yes, it would offset your W2 income, but we'll leave it there. So you have to listen to our next episode. <laughs> yeah. Love the cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> like how a tax episode, we, we can still bake in cliffhangers. Like, Hey, if you want to learn about SDR loopholes, stay tuned for the next episode. Um, all right. So are we, we're good on that question, right? That first question. We mm -hmm. have another question here from Instagram, uh, user at spicy chicken <laughs> wants to know, do you do cost segregation before or after rehab? Spicy chicken. I love it. Okay. So, um, cost segs, <laughs> we generally recommend for, uh, post your, uh, post your rehab. Cause when we make the intros, um, to <laughs> the cost seg partners, they always ask us like, what's the property? What's the purchase price? Is there a prior depreciation schedule? And then total improvements made on the property. So, um, would probably want your number after you've made or spent all your money to rehab your property. So I wonder if like, if you are doing, um, let's say your, your rehab is going to take some time, maybe not 20 years, but maybe like some time. And, you know, as you know, I mean, it's 20% drop every single year. You think it's more, I guess you should need to really plan it out to be like, if you want to take it now, take what, whatever rehab you have now, or you do it later, or, you know, maybe risk, you know, rush or your, um, your rehab. Oh yeah, um, I, think, I think too. You, yeah, definitely. You hit it spot on the planning part because it's like, one: do you need the passive losses to start with, or accelerating your depreciation? Right? Do you need to change your twenty-seven half year property to five, seven, fifteen years uh, separated out? Yeah. Well, talk to your CPAs, everyone. So, you uh, your last one for this episode. Kathy Ho asks, so rank what's your best bookkeeping software platforms for new LLC entrepreneurs to professionals? Oh, nice. All right, cool beans. Nice. Uh, so um, the best bookkeeping software, I'd say, depends on like where you're sitting at. Um, so if you just want to keep it lean and lean and cool, um, easy, no for no charges. Um, Wave apps is super easy. Um, so they're free bookkeeping software. Uh, that's for kind of for more on like the entrepreneur active business side. Uh, and then if you want to like shell out for some extra bells and whistles, uh, QuickBooks online, um, but they both do the same. They're, they're both just system records. Um, and then for the folks in the real estate side items, you know, Stess is free. Um, so you can use them and then QuickBooks too. I've seen people set it up that way too, where they have QuickBooks for all their properties. So whatever's easiest, uh, for you to use with whatever's like within your budget. Um, there's a ton more, but those are, you know, the three simple ones to recommend. Cool. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Um, and that concludes our first episode of two on year end tax strategies. And we're going to attach all of the things, <laughs> all of the, uh, all of the six things you do need to know for in our, in our show notes today. So, um, so please catch that if you did not, if you had to go back. So, We'll catch you next time, Tony. See All you right. around. Take care. Thanks Thanks for much. Having me. Hey, Pod Squatters. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of Sarah Ladies. Thanks to the support from our following sponsor. Hey, Sarah Ladies listeners. Tony, the CPA dude here. Also, your resident Sarah Tax Bro. And with your lovely host, uh, they came up with some great ideas. So, Miss Tiffany and Miss Anita here have came up with the tax workout plan. So, we're going to help you get cut up on your taxes. Also, we're going to help you cut up on your own body. So just like working out, taxes is a monthly thing. Um, you can't ignore it, otherwise you're gonna fall off the cliff. So with the code Sarah Ladies, we're gonna give you a nice healthy discount. And we're also gonna give the Sarah Ladies a kickback just to help support their podcast. I've had a fun time 
being on their podcast a couple times this year. Uh, they've done great. I really want to see them blow up in 2023. So with your support, with this creative tax workout plan and also a workout plan in general, we're going to help you transform your life in 2023. So mention the code Sierra Ladies when you talk to me. You can email me at Tony at the CPA Dude. Um, text me at 928CPA Dude. TikTok's the CPA Dude. Website's the CPA Dude.com. Everything's the CPA Dude. So Sierra Ladies is your special code here. And let's make this year great. Thanks for hanging with the Sierra Ladies. Until next time. Bye.